In this video, we'll discuss how to set up an Express server. First, we'll see how to easily create a server by using the listen method. Next, we'll look at some different ways that we can start our Express server. We'll learn how to configure NodeMon to auto restart our server on file changes. Finally, we'll introduce the concept of asynchronous programming. Let's start off by taking a look at configuring Express from the beginning. I've set up a new folder called server. So in my terminal, I'm going to navigate to my new folder. The first thing that I want to do is create a package.json. So I can do this by saying npm init. I'm just going to hit enter a bunch of times until I get to the yes. So what this does is it creates a package.json. And the reason why I like to create a package.json initially is so that I can use the dash dash save flag when I'm installing any packages. So currently we don't see any packages in installed. I'm going to change my main entry point to app.js and save this. Now I'm going to create an app.js file. And I'm only going to install one package, and that is Express. We'll give it the dash dash save flag. Now you can see it was automatically added as a dependency into my package.json file right here. I prefer this method of using Express my applications as opposed to the automatic scaffolding because the scaffolding comes with some packages that I might not normally use like Jade and it requires us to use the npm start to get our server going. The first thing that I'll do in my app.js file is require Express. So I'll set a variable of Express and require it to use methods that are built into Express, I'm going to create a variable called app. So the very first thing that we can do is we can create a server that will run on a port that we've defined. We can basically use any port on our local system that's greater than 80. So our machines use up to port 80. So we'll create a port of, call it 8000. Now to start a new server, all I need to do is call the app.listen, passing in my port. And to make sure that our server is actually started, on start, I'm going to log server started. Now to run this file and start our express server, I have a few different options. I can say node app or node app.js either way and we can see we get the log almost immediately server started so there's actually a better way to pass in the message server started and that's by using a callback we'll talk a little bit more about synchronous versus asynchronous programming when we discuss more in detail some of the other methods that we can use for express However, the basic idea is that when we write code, it's rendered sequentially. So you might be under the impression that this file and that node itself is 100% asynchronous, which is not the case. This right here is all synchronous, meaning first we're creating a variable, then another variable, then another one, then we're creating a server, and then we're logging the message. So that if our server were to crash before getting to this log message, then we would never see this log message. So the whole great thing about asynchronous programming is that we can use callbacks. So if we put a callback right here, then we can log an error and a response. So then I can say if there's an error, And say log server error and I can use the standard else and log that my server started 
So let's save this and double check that it's still working. Okay, and I still get my server started. So that's the, the whole concept of asynchronous programming is that we can use these functions as callbacks in many different places. And we can use these callbacks and asynchronous programming in general as a means of not hanging up the browser. And that's the whole point is that we can send requests to a server and the user can keep on doing what they're doing, waiting for the data to come back to them. And so this is one way of starting a server. And this is my personal preference when creating an express app is to create my app.listen at the bottom of my node, or I should say at the bottom of my app.js or express web application. We saw a different way in our previous example when we were auto-generating an express scaffold using the express command. So here's our old app.js, and you can see that in this version, there is no app.listen because instead there's a script set up in our in our package.json which allows us to use npm start so really it's a matter of preference so typically in my own apps i just like to use an anonymous function here and i don't generally pass any kinds of errors at least in the app.listen method and i'll just log for a success callback and then on top of that I prefer to use nodemon the benefit of using nodemon is it will automatically restart your server whenever changes are made in any of your server files after you save the file make sure that when you're installing nodemon use the dash g flag which will install nodemon globally now you'll be able to run nodemon using the nodemon command plus the name of our file which is app it will start up our server and give us the server started message now if we change this to something else and then save the file it will automatically restart the server noticing that a file has changed